Hello everyone, Nicole Stackline, Technical Agronomist for DeKalb and Asgrow in Northeast Iowa, coming at you with another focus on fertility. This week, it's all about potassium. When you see it on your soil test, it's going to be a K. I'm not sure why they chose K, that's just what it is. So potassium is one of our major macronutrients, which means that we need it in large quantities as opposed to some other nutrients, such as our boron or our zinc or our manganese. Now in the plant, Potassium is living in the juices of the plant. It's not really getting incorporated into the sugars or some of the other molecules in the plant, much like when you think about nitrogen and phosphorus. Living in the juices is also why you're removing so much more when you remove a green crop, such as hay or corn silage, because you're removing all of the juices. Now, that's why the same reason is why you can get leaching of potassium out of the residue back into the soil. So let's think about this, particularly when we think about removal if we're taking corn stalks off for bedding. This last year, we were able to harvest high moisture corn at about 28%, let that residue dry out the rest of the way, and then before even getting a rain on it, we were able to bale up those corn stalks and put them in the shed. Now, a couple of years ago, we harvested our high moisture corn and then it rained and it rained and it rained and it rained before we were able to bale those corn stalks and put them in the shed. Now, the potassium that I was removing this last year when we didn't get a rain on top of it, removing a lot more than I am those couple of years ago when I got so much more rain. Because as soon as I hit physiological maturity, black layer in that corn crop, I'm able to start leaching the potassium out of the plant that was working in there beforehand. So potassium plays a couple of really big roles in our crop. The most important one really is kind of water regulation within the plant. It's also responsible for opening and closing those stomates, the holes on the underside of the leaf. So when we think about how water works through that plant, when you open up those stomate, two very important things are going to happen. The first one is, is that it is allowing carbon dioxide to come into the plant. Carbon dioxide is the carbon source for when we're gonna make those sugars into. The other thing that it's doing is it's allowing water to escape the plant, which might not be a good thing all the time, but if we have water going out of the stomates, it means that it's kind of creating that suction in the straw, if you think about it that way, to allow water to move into the plant. Potassium is also really important when we think about stalk integrity and standability. In a lot of cases, when I see the stalk breaking down and that plant falling over, if it's not because of a disease such as the anthracnose stalk rot or crown rot, in many cases, it's because of lack of potassium. Now, lack of potassium can happen because of a couple of different reasons. Obviously, the one that our brain goes to first is, I don't have enough potassium in my soil. But in some cases, it's not that there wasn't the potassium in the soil, it's just that the plant couldn't take it up. Because just like potash exists in the juice in the plant, it also exists in the juice or in the water in the soil. And if we have, for example, really droughty conditions, we can't suck up water, we also aren't sucking up that potassium nutrient. So we realize it's really important, so how much do we need? So let's look at this example here. Let's say that we have a soil test K of 154 parts per million, and we're looking at a yield of 230 bushels. Now, personally, I like to see my soil test K at 200 parts per million. So there's two parts of this equation. Removal, we gotta cover what we're removing, and then building it up to that 200 parts per million. So when we remove corn, that's 0.22 units of K2O per bushel. So we're gonna take 0.22 by 230 bushels. That gives us 50.6 pounds or units of K2O. We have to convert this into pounds of fertilizer. So 50.6 divided by 0 0.60 because potash fertilizer is 60% K2O. That gives us 84.3 pounds of potash fertilizer. That's going to remove what we take off with our 230 bushels. But that's only part of it because we also want to build our soil test K up to 200 parts per million. So we're going to go from 154 to 200. Now, on average, it's going to take 10 units of K2O to increase 
our parts per million by one. So let's convert that quick to pounds of fertilizer. So 10 units of K2O divided by 60% gives us 16 pounds of potash. So 16 pounds of potash is going to increase our soil test by one. So 16 pounds of potash by 46 part per million because we need to increase our soil test 46 part per million to get us to 200. That's 736 pounds of potash. Now, that's a lot of material. We're gonna spread that out over four years. So 736 divided by four is 184 pounds of potash. We put our removal and our build together, and that's gonna give us 268 pounds of potash. When we look at silage here, if we're looking at a 230 bushel equivalent crop, this is gonna look like a 23 ton per acre. Um, removal, like I said before, potash removal on a green crop is really high. So we're looking at an equivalent of 1.1 units of K2O per bushel on 230, that's 253 pounds of K2O converted to potash is 421 pounds of potash. To cover our build, that's 605 pounds of potash per acre per year. When we take a look at soybeans, soybeans actually per bushel like potassium a lot more. So if we're going to do removal off of 65 bushel soybeans, the process is the same. We got 1.2 units of K2O removed per bushel. Take that by 65, uh, 65 bushels. We got 78 units of K2O removed. We convert that into pounds of potash, 130 pounds of potash. The same, uh, same process, same numbers, everything for build on this acre. That's going to bring us to 314 pounds of potash for removal and build on a 65 bushel soybean crop. Those are some pretty basic equations and a good place to start. However, we've made a lot of assumptions. For starters, uh, we're assuming that every acre is producing 230 bushel per acre. We're also assuming that for your soil, it's going to take 16 pounds of potash to increase your soil test level by one part per million, even though the range can be between 10 and 33 pounds. So we've used a lot of averages. One of the really important things is to realize that not all of these things are absolute, but it's important that we're giving our crop as much potash as it needs. Another thing to consider is, you know, I prefer 200 parts per million um, and where I like to keep my potash levels. However, one of the other numbers that we need to look at in our soil test is our percent potassium base, con base saturation. And the reason that's important is because not all soil types can hold 200 parts per million. When we look at soils with a very low CEC or low cation exchange capacity, such as a sandy soil, it's not really plausible to assume that it can get up to 200 or 300 parts per million. Since pot potassium is a positively charged ion in the soil, if all of the cation exchange capacity, if all of that is filled up, it can leach through the soil. So when we look at the CEC and then also look at the percent potassium saturation, I like to see that between a six and an eight percent. So even if you're not reaching 200 parts per million, you can still have plenty of potassium if you're looking at that six to eight percent range in your saturation. So that's all for now. Hope you learned something. If you got questions, call, text, or email.